Uh, welcome to our next uh, plenary session. The talk will be given by Professor Wadim Schubert-Schmidt. He's the chair of uh, Mechanics of Materials at the Wilson School of Mechanical, Electrical, and uh, Manufacturing Engineering at Loughborough University, UK. He has the Mechanics of, uh, of Advanced Material Research Group and the Research Team Materials and Measurement. He's a Chartered Engineer, Fellow of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers and Institute of Physics. Professor Schubert-Schmidt's research focus is uh, on mechanics and uh, macromechanics of deformation, damage, and uh, fracture in advanced uh, engineering and uh, biological materials, including composites and uh, nanocomposites, biopolymers, metals and alloys, biological and uh, biomedical materials, materials for macroelectronics, sports materials, and non-woven fabrics. Professor Shiba Schmidt chairs the Technical Committee 14, Integrative of Biomedical and Biological Materials of the European Structure Integrated Society. He's editor-in-chief of SVR series in Mechanics of Advanced Materials, associate editor of a batch of prestigious journals in the research field. And Professor Schieber Schmidt is also an honorary professor at Perm National Research Polytechnic University, Russia. He was a visiting professor at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, Japan, New Mexico State University, University of uh, Texas at uh, Dallas, UK, St. Petersburg State University at Russia, Griffith University in Australia. And he has uh, co-authored five research monographs and more than 630 peer-reviewed scientific papers, and including more than 380 journal papers. And he has supervised and co-supervised more than 80 PhD candidates. Wow. <laughs> yeah, then it's my great pleasure to invite uh, Professor Schubert Schmidt to give this talk, please. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And now for something completely different, as uh, just you know the statement from the Monty Python, at least so just some people from the older generation remember this part. Uh, generally the point is that you see the title which is here, Biomedical Materials. And uh, I didn't start working in this area. Uh, I was working as many of you here for the aerospace and defense application dealing with different type of materials, but it became clearer and clearer that the development of the personal medicine and pushing the medicine through the medical engineering to the 21st century proper is making a point of dealing with materials, biomedical materials, uh, important and I was very happy that this was supported by this community and eight years ago it was uh, a decision that with all other technical committees on all this traditional materials we have introduced also the technical committee 14 structural integrity of biological and biomedical materials and there will be a special session here of this technical committee everybody so just I invited there to discuss the future of this topic so now so just going back to the business and uh, the definition of the Biomedical materials is a little bit fuzzy. I specifically made it more precise in the title of the Technical Committee of the European Structural Integrity Society. There is a difference now recognized, uh, so just at the level of the uh, uh, notation, that biological materials, these are the life materials, so just this is tissues in our body, animals, and so on. While biomedical materials, they are our traditional materials metals, ceramics, alloys, composites, but which are used specifically for the application in the medical sciences. So, and this is the difference which I would like to just also to continue in my presentation here, but before I will start, as always, each especially plenary lecture is a result of the work of many researchers, and here are the members of my team who contributed to the major topics of this presentation. Also, so just to demonstrate that we have published a bit so just in this area, and I don't want to pester the slides with the references to our publication, but so just if you want, you can find them. So, and this
this is a very short outline for the plenary lecture. And the major topic is the effect of environment. And then we'll consider two types of different materials. Collagen is a biological material. And then we will consider biopolymers, specifically 3D printed biopolymers. And you understand the importance of additive manufacturing nowadays and <coughs> in this context. Now, uh, what is the difference and why bio mechanics of biomaterials and biological and biomedical materials is that important? Um, and we have development in the field of mechanics of materials for centuries nowadays. There are all the models, all the different type of behavior. Clearly, we are trying to find new niches and to try uh, to find new developments. But even speaking about the traditional structural materials, which are being used as the implants or the explants, their physiological conditions make their application very, very specific. I was dealing, for instance, in the area of dynamics, of like ballistic impacts and so on. We are speaking there about hundreds of meters per second and very high energies. In our life, luckily, we are not exposed much to this type of the action. So that's why we usually deal in this very specific range of the temperature. You know, so just clearly, so just those who have COVID have a so just somewhat higher temperature, but usually we are speaking about a very specific one. And then all the, so just, uh, all the type of our physiological activities, we are speaking about mere meters, meters per second, a part of the accident, for instance. And then we have also our internal cycle where everything is going with the, so just generally, uh, uh, with the frequency of the hertz and subhertz. So, but, the important point is that surprisingly, the interior of our body and even the surface of it, it is a very harsh environment for very, for very many materials. So, uh, and the reason for this is the topic which I'm going to present. Uh, so just clearly looking, and I will continue using the analogy with the traditional materials. So we do know that in the huge area of the effect into the structural integrity, the effect of the environmental fact, uh, factors is becoming, uh, is always important, but relatively small part of it. So clearly we can imagine that very specific type of this environment is also uh, so just uh, becoming an issue one, but it is becoming increasingly more important for different type of the application uh, that we are considering uh, to use. Then another idea, and then I will start it proper, go into the slides, though I would not s stick anymore to this one, is that, so uh, uh, we would like to have the situation if you so just uh, introduce, like Pedro was doing something with Airbus, so just you have the library or the database of the materials, you do your finite elements, you take all the data, put it into the, into the model, develop more complex models, but this is more or less straightforward one. The problem is that so just we are the variant of this airplane because so just if you would like to want at the interaction of the implants and the explants with, the, with our tissues, we need to characterize them and we need to know how they work. And here we have a lot of problems because we have a significant variability. The tissues, they are limited, but they are quite diverse. So let us now start with the environmental factor. And here is a slide which is about the amount of water in our body. And you can see that practically, so we all know from the secondary school, that so just most of us is made of water, more or less. There is another element which I will discuss it in the so just very quickly. But you see the amounts of what it is here. Besides, it is that so just there is so just generally it is a physiological fluid which is even more corrosive than the water. But let us stick to the water uh, for the purpose of this presentation only. So yeah, and another part is here is a reminder. Look that so just variability is always there. So in so just in sexes, with age and so on. So, and this is the way, sorry, so just there would be a, so just a few more, so just images here. But this is the way how engineers are treating. This is the real tissue and this is the artificial one. And what you see, they're all being dealt with outside of its natural environment. 
So that's why their behavior, and this is the point, is totally different inside the body when they're exposed to this amount of the water. And so even so there are special protocols to irrigate and so on, but clearly this is the dead part of the body. It's not a real one. So uh, let us now look at just, and uh, what I'm trying to do in my group is just <coughs> a part of the holistic approach. We're trying to use the good old ideas of the mechanics of materials, for instance, mechanics of composite materials, microstructural materials, and so on, in order to understand the underpinning uh, mechanisms of deformation, damage, and fracture of this. And I hope that uh, so just you can take some interesting uh, bits from this presentation, which is slightly different from the others, so, but we have so just symposia on this topic. So collagen. So generally, it is uh, uh, one third of all the body proteins, so just, so just which is quite a lot. Um, and it have a very special type of behavior, and it is, and it is so just generally uh, here. The uh, so just I wouldn't go into the into this diagram. It's from our review on this topic. So just how you can produce it, what are the properties, and so on. But let us go uh, so just more directly. So just collagen, and this is one of the typical uh, so just uh, situation with our biological materials. So it has a very high hierarchical structure. So it starts clearly at the level of the large molecules, going all the way through the special type of the triple helix, then it goes to the fibrils, fibers, and finally it is in the tissues. So it's clearly, if so just the lens is here, yeah, so just in meters, so just if we are speaking uh, so just about the very large animals, they can be probably just a little bit higher, but this is where we are at the limit. And now let us look here at, uh, so just at the body parts. And you can see here the amount of the collagen in different part of the tissues. So, so just you can see that tendons are the most uh, collagen rich, it's practically the collagen. And so just you can see that we have uh, quite a lot of them in all other body parts. So uh, now the point is that what people are trying to do, if you are trying to take the part, say, of liver or of bone or of skin, as we have done in the past and present it here, then inevitably you have a complex microstructure and you don't have the real building blocks. And if you will um, so just uh, uh, recollect the first plenary lecture by Pedro, so when he was looking at CFRPs, he was studying separately matrix, which was so just epoxy, and the fibers. And clearly, we would like, and nobody has done this before, to look at the properties of the pure collagen. Uh, before we can go and then so just use our approaches to go at the level of the bio tissues. And so, so it's what we have done, it was so just, uh, this is the process to give you a, a, a short idea. It can be done so that I hate the weight easily, saying that it can be easily produced. Yes, so just your PhD students so just will use probably four, six months to do this. At the end, it is there. But so just as the result, we have 100% pure collagen. And this is in the form of the film because it is so just I've shown to you. And this is his simply here, so just uh, the result to demonstrate that we have the collagen powder, uh, which is 100% collagen one. And this is the result, and you can see that this is effectively the same material here. Then now, so just what we are going to do, and this is so just the technology, so just uh, the process that we are going to continue. Uh, as I've said, environment is very important one, so that's why a part of the using our micro tester machines in air we are also using this with the, <coughs> sorry, with the bio bath, where the, we put the specimens inside the vessel, which is so just then we have either water or so-called PBS, so physiological fluid there, and then we test the behavior and compare, and this is the major point here, comparison, how these materials behave in air and in so just fluid environment. And so just, yeah, I, I hope that other so just uh, images are better. You can see here, and I'm uh, using the color coding, so blue will be for in air test, and so just red will be for in aqua. So clearly at this stage, you wouldn't see much difference, though it, it is supposed to be there. But let us now look at the results of our good stress strain diagrams. 
and you can see. So I, I, I do appreciate that getting through this presentation is very tricky. I will make comments. This is for the dry so D, and this is so just for the water in aqua environment. It is the same material, and you can immediately see here that the behavior is so just this insert is showing this graph in more details, and you can see the difference in the scale of the axis of ordinates. So we have large deformations, but very low load bearing capacity. Here the deformations are smaller, but the behavior is significantly steeper. And uh, another part is so just also not dissimilar to other materials that we are using. You have the evolution of what we can consider instantaneous modulus. And we can see that the modulus is so just is, uh, so just is started around so just uh, one and a half gigapascals. Then it is dropping to the second stage, which is nearly constant with the deformation. And then it is drop, dropping at the end of the loading. And here are the respective parameters. And clearly, we've started the behavior also <coughs> because these are uh, viscous materials by definition. So, and yeah, hopefully on the other screens you can see this is so just on top of this, so just red, it is in dry or in air, and this is much below, it is so just in water, and you can see that this is now a logarithmic scale. We have roughly three orders of magnitude for the storage modulus, for instance. So the same material, you put it into the water. So, and it takes, so just for you to understand, it takes 10 minutes to be fully hydrated. So that's why it doesn't, but so just generally we are bringing it to the uh, situation inside your body. And so it's just, uh, we studied also the long term effects because whatever we would to try to put in our body, we would like to last unless we would like it to disappear as a result of the biodegradation, especially uh, designed by resorbable uh, <coughs> stents, about which we will have a little bit later. And you can see what is happening. Uh, so just if it is in air, so you see, and we have done, uh, we have done the trials uh, just uh, up to 12 months exposure, and we see that not much is happening. There is even some stiffening as a result, and clearly as a result, the material is becoming so less ductile. And so please notice up to 12 months. Yep. So now we put this in water, and we see here that you see that the scale is now in days. So the same material is becoming significantly prone to changes and to degradation. So here is, for instance, the weight loss. And here are the parameters here, what is happening. So just to demonstrate that there is intake of water and also so just clearly the weight loss is some, so just it's something different. And what we can see here that this was the material at day zero. And here are after one, three, seven, 10, and 14 days. This is simply the features on the surface. So, but you already see that something is happening and the quantitative data was shown to you before. Here is another type of the analysis. Now looking at the modulus, we can see here, you do remember, so just I can remind you that it was 1.4 gig, gigabyte, or so, sorry, <laughs> so just gigapascals in, uh, in the air. In water, we have, as promised, significantly low one, but it is also declining very quickly. Now the question, what is happening after the 14 days? After 14 days, there is nothing to test. So there is a full loss of integrity. And don't forget that this is inside your body. So, so just that even if you would like your stance to be fully uh, so just, uh, biodegradable, you usually speaking about up to six months. Good, but it is a pure collagen, so it's nobody is, do, is going to do this. So just, these are the building blocks of this. Yeah, and clearly we are looking now here at the behavior at the tensile strains and s strain, and this is, so which is, so just, there are some tens, but I don't have much time to discuss it. We've studied clearly this in a very fine detail. And now, so just going, going to the, the standard diagrams, which we are all, uh, um, <coughs> 
pretty well familiar with. And if we are now looking here a different type of the, so just a, a, a typical comparison is with polymeric materials. So you can see here, this is our additions. This is for the hydrated collagen and this is for the dry collagen. So we have, this is the strength in the, so just in the orders of magnitude and this is the loss coefficient. So just demonstrating it, 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 its viscous behavior. So uh, uh, we continue to do this. So just this is community which likes to look at their cracks. So let's do this. So just we introduce the cracks so just into, into the collagen specimens as shown here with the notch. And I hope that everything works. Uh, yeah, there is, no, it, it, it is supposed to work. No, 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 it's okay, it's very slow. But you can see here, so just, it's better. This is, so just to see that, the, no, it's gone, it's gone. So just, thank you very much. So it is supposed to do automatically. And finally, it, so just, it has very quickly broken. So just, you couldn't notice this that, that quickly, but it's a typical brittle type of the behavior. So when we have a very uh, quick, uh, uh, so just f uh, failure of the ligament. Now, let us go now, it is in the water. You see what is happening here. So it is a continuous process. It's simply because uh, just the uh, high resolution uh, images are being loaded. Uh, so you can see that we have the blunting of the crack of the notch. And then, so it continues. And only after reaching a critical crack opening angle, it starts propagating. And you see that behavior is totally different. This is not the end of the story. So just clearly, yeah, the interesting point is that although behaviors are totally different, brittle versus ductile, and the modules are totally different, but the one brittleness and ductility compensate each other to a sense that the work of fracture it is pretty close, which is very interesting. You have the orders of magnitudes of the properties, but the behavior is still pretty well interesting indeed. And here is a repetition. So just these are the specific positions at different uh, so just, uh, post, uh, points of the force displacement diagram. And you can see here, this is in the water, and this is simply the snapshots, and these are the zoomed in situation with the crack. And so just, so, so just very quickly, some ideas what is happening. So we have here the fibrillar orientation, which is random. It, it, was, it was checked. And then when the pre-crack is grown, then we have the crack bridging mechanisms. But then, so just when we have a threshold of the brittle behavior, then it fails. So here, in, so just the effect of the water makes this molecule more movable. And they can result in disentanglement. And we have here the, so just the situation of the change in the orientation, and we have the blunting of the, of the, of the notch, and the, uh, the results, uh, are as we've seen. Now let us look at the, uh, at the side of the, of the crack. So just this is the position behind the crack tip. And you can see here the totally different behavior. This part is zoomed here for the so just blue in there, and this is for red. And you can see here the formation of a lot of the systems. So just people who are dealing with polymers can say maybe it's freeze formation. But you can see here the single fibrils which are causing all this type of behavior. And so just once more to the diagram. So we can see here that so just in terms of the toughness modulus. So here is the wet behavior and here is the dry behavior. So from that point of view, I've already mentioned that at the level of the toughness, they are pretty comparable. Good, so, so just, and now we are switching, so just from the biomaterials to the oh, biological materials to the biopolymer materials. We have a strong community of people in polymers here that, and we are doing additive manufacture, but in this case, it is not of metals. We do for metals as well, but. It is FDM because uh, just polymer sprinting, it is much closer to the properties of our bodies and we don't wa want to have the stress shielding effect as a result of this. So very quickly to show you, so just, yeah, our university was the, so just the center of the additive manufacturing in the UK and the proud so just, uh, achievement uh, when the 
just when the skeleton of Richard III was found in Leicester, so which was in 2012, so we have produced a copy of his skull, which is uh, just for somebody. So just uh, yeah, benefits of AM. I will go very quickly through this. So this is slightly different. So just to show what so just was already shown by Fatima and what so just was mentioned uh, by the previous uh, so presenter. Effectively, you have filaments which are going there and they are forming to you. Now, very quickly about the uh, biomaterials, so just uh, biopolymers, it was found by chance during the Second World War. So, uh, in Spitfire, there was polymethyl metacrylate and the glass covers, and it was found that, unfortunately, when the pilots, they, uh, so just, they were so just under the fire, uh, the parts of the, so just of the glass and uh, PMMA sometimes finished inside their eye. And it was found that PMMA is much better, healed much better, biocompatible, and people started speaking about this from that point of view. And so just a typical uh, uh, so just, uh, material which I'm going to speak, it's a PLA, a polylactic acid, so just developed a while ago and became very prominent. And interestingly enough, I was told that in volume, the 3D printing is much more in polymers than in the metals so far. And I'm not speaking, so just even if you would, would forget about, so just about all the printers in kindergartens and primary schools where, st uh, where everybody is using this. We are doing this a little bit more uh, advanced way. So we have introduced the monofilament specimen. So just, and uh, this is what already have shown. So just this is, you see the direction of this. And this is what we have done because the problem is, and I was arguing and continue to argue that especially for the polymers, people are forgetting the uh, foundations of mechanics that it is not a material, it is a structure. If you have a complex path, if you have different skins, if you have different infills, how it could be a material. So, and many people are still continuing using the standards as if it were the, the bulk materials here. So what we have done, we have done it proper. And so just, we have a special software which can control much better machines. We can control not only the path, which everybody can, but we can also so just combine in one go, we can produce, go from thick, thinner, thin, thick. So just making this kind, if you want, of the T-bone shaped materials. And then we were so just looking at the standard one along the, so just, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, transfer to the, uh, to the printing direction. And then we have put this, this is the bio bath, and once more. And you can see now the PLA, which is uh, just uh, the material of choice for many biomedical application. You can see here that in air, and this is so just it is at the room temperature. There will be another color coding. Sorry, so just I'm, I'm pushing you a little bit too hard. So just uh, and this is uh, and this is uh, so just this room temperature, and the red would be the physiological temperature, which is 36.6. .6. And you can immediately see the differences in the behavior. In this part, I'm showing you the same scales of coordinates. Uh, so just so that's why you can see the comparison. It is not as drastic as was in collagen, but still a significant decline. And now, so just if we are going to look at the results, we were doing a lot and a lot of the different type of the studies from the, st uh, from the monotonous one to the cyclic one and looking at different features. And you can see here, for instance, that so just this is comparison once more. This is in air and this is submerged. And you see all these differences which I've already mentioned. So let us now so just go to the degradation, the effect of the environment, which I've mentioned before. And we can, uh, here we will have so just now uh, body temperature, and then we have what people in polymers community are using accelerated tests in order to have it quicker, 50 degrees and 65 degrees. And you can see that the stages are nearly the same, so one, two, and three, but look here at the bottom, so we start at the same moment. This is at 37 at after 270 days, so three quarters of a year. And this is at 50 degrees, 40 days. And at 65 degrees, it is only seven days. Uh, the question is, if I've told you that inside the body, 37 degrees, so just 65, you are dead. Why we are doing this? Don't forget that biomedical, so just there are quite a lot of uh, requirements. Sterilization is 120 to 220 degrees. 
So depending on the materials you are going to use. So that's why you should also consider what is going to happen under these conditions. And so just now looking at this, so we were looking, we've done all the analysis in terms of the so just molecular, molecular weight, which is degrading with time. So you see here now the axis are in days. Looking at the mechanical properties, which are declining and so just and going, this is at 37 degrees, going practically to the full vanishing at the stage which I've mentioned. And so just the fracture, the fracture surface properties, so just which I will show you in a while, they are so just also changing. And this is, this is the interesting uh, result here. When we were loading materials, so we so just here it is in Z direction, so perpendicular to the deposition of the filaments, and this is alone. It's still mono material, mono filament specimens as close as you can get to a real material rather than the structure. And you can see here that here we have so just a brittle, brittle fracture, which is so just uh, the end of this. And we have an interesting behavior, which we so just <coughs> we decided to call it striation, which is so just not striation you see in the fatigue because this was a continuous load. And if you are now going, and if you will see, for instance, what is happening uh, to the F filaments, the, so just the behavior, so just we have this uh, typical uh, so just formation of the shear lips at the bottoms and so just some internal necking and here is so just also the uh, the analysis of the profile now so just what is happening uh, with the uh, uh, what is happening with them uh, uh, this time and you can see and we all do know that proctography gives us a lot of clues they are not always easy to interpret but still so you can see that the failure, the character of the failure is changing drastically. All these patterns that we've seen at the beginning, they disappear and we have a very, so just a very smooth, so just nearly mirror, uh, uh, mirror type uh, fracture surface here. And so just once more, <coughs> this was perpendicular to the deposition, so that's why we have, we have the points which are nearly of the same strength, and but we see clearly that the ductility in this direction is significantly significantly less. Here, there is no stop of this uh, of this um, uh, process. And here, I would like to make a point which we we, uh, we started, and I hope we we finish the discussion in the journal, including additive manufacturing, because. Many people, including ourselves, they thought that the difference in the behavior of the 3D printed uh, polymers is defined by the properties of the interface. Because we always see that it always fails at the interface, and people were saying, okay, this is the difference, so just we started doing this, and the research was, and we, we attracted, so we started collaboration uh, uh, with people for, so just for working on interfaces in polymers only for them to be disappointed and for us to be so just uh, very happy. We found that generally the properties of the interface of many polymers, PLA and so just typical result, is exactly the same as in all the other parts. What people were doing, because we have here on the surface, as I've shown to you, so there are so just there are groups which are being formed, which we've seen also in the other presentation because of the layer-wise uh, building. And these groups, people were simply measuring the, uh, the width of these with calipers and forgetting that there are the groups, and this community knows groups are the stress raisers. So as a result, if you simply divide the load by the smallest uh, cross-sectional area, you will get exactly the property of the bulk material. The fracture is different. It is not a property, it is performance. If we have the stress raiser, something will fail quicker. So this is the result of the anisotropy, but it makes the, uh, clearly the message for the modulus is much easier because then the properties are the same inside the filaments at the, at the interface. And so just, we have even the paper which, is, which states this in the title. Um, so, and now, so just uh, going to the degradation, and you can see here, and I'm nearly, so just uh, nearly close to my finish before my chairwoman would kick me out of the podium. So, so generally, you can see here uh, that uh, now we all understand the importance of how the material fails. This is once more Z material, so it is loading perpendicular to the, uh, to the deposition of the filaments. 
And you can see here, so just these are the microgrooves I was speaking about because this is single filament specimen. And you can see what is happening here, a large plastic deformation as a result. And you can consider what is happening after the degradation 120 to 110 days, that the situation is changing significantly. When we are looking at the so-called F specimens, so just which are, so just, uh, which are being printed with the filaments along the stretching direction. You can see this is the pattern also here present, but they are now loading. There is no effect of this uh, stress razor because they are aligned in the direction of the loading, not perpendicular to it. And you can see here formation of neck increasing, local, uh, local necks formation, and then we can have internal neck, and, and so just finally we finish with the uh, smooth fracture. I'm not saying that we have the answer to all these types of behavior. So that's why it's just we are inviting people so just from the community of the mechanics of polymers, or rather probably it's by uh, uh, physics of polymers to look into this. Uh, we've done now a bit. And now we have here, so just the situation degradation. I do this very quickly. It is for Z and F specimens. And you can see this is at 50 degrees, which is going quicker in the days. And this is now at 65 degrees, and this is the behavior. And always we have the same level of the, uh, of the strength of these materials, but ductility is changing significantly. And so, so just there are no conclusions. And the reason for this is a straightforward one. These are the good I conclude on this. This is the starting point of so the work for, for us. Clearly, we now know the building blocks, mechanics of the major building blocks on the one hand of the biological materials, on the other hand, materials which are being used for different implants into our body. And we are now continuing doing this work. So you see that the processes are complex. On the one hand, it is so just, uh, it is more uh, complicated than the standard materials because of the environmental factor. And I hope that I persuaded you that we cannot study these materials only at the uh, ambient environment of your lab where you, you do have the temperature between 19 if you are in Britain and whatever it is in India. But so just generally, the effect of the humidity and, so just, and water and the physiological environment is crucial for this type of the application. Thank you very much.